Well, I just want to welcome everyone to the to our Mishmatic webinar. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker, Tia Dong Fan Yamada. Um, she enjoys building interactive graphical illustrations with GeoGebra, which she integrates into her lesson plans for undergraduate math levels, including statistics, trigonometry, and calculus. She extended her computational activities from the classroom to industry practice as a summer 2014 faculty research fellow at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. She is the president elect of CMC Cubed South in California. She has presented much of her work at math conferences and journals, such as MAA, AMATIC, CMC Cubed South, and more. Artwork from her, one of her previous articles was featured on the cover of Math Amatic Educator, September 2014, and some of her other work can be viewed on her website, fanyamada.weebly.com. So everyone, please let me introduce uh, to you Fan Yamada. Thank you, Michael, for having me here um, this morning, to, I mean, this afternoon for, to you guys. I'm in California. It cut up the weather. Are you hear me okay? Um, the weather is really cold. That's why I'm kind of bundled up right now. Usually I'm not wear this one. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I, you know, I'm in the house. So we have like sick computer hookup into the Wi-Fi, same Wi-Fi. So I, excuse me, if I, I turn off the door so it's better, um, you know, presentation when we zoom into all the online um, website. Okay, so let me share my screen first here. Um, so uh, thank you for Michael for introducing me. So these are, um, I gotta introduce you some of the tool um, that I have developed and then some of them I uh, copy from uh, other people too. Um, so please put in the chat and then uh, if you have any question and then I will stop to answer your question here. Um, so first I use GeoGebra in my class before a lot, um, but I think that now, more help and because class we can the chart we don't see much unless we see something but if it's online uh, so what can we do we have to make um, you know I like to see my student work if they that work is not there then I couldn't see then I cannot do much work in there um, so let's uh, jump into this one right here so all my material you can go to my website fanyamada.wheeler.com and then you click on teaching let me show you here um, <clears throat> So when you go to my website, um, uh, one note aside right here, uh, please use the Google Chrome um, because the Safari doesn't work well. So you go to my website. Um, let's see, let me type in for you to see how does that look like. So then later you can navigate, but I'm gonna give you something for you to practice with me here. So you click on teaching, I put all the material in course uh, right here. So you can uh, choose one of them and then you can um, work in your class. But right now, let's try the first one, this one right here. So GeoGebra, a very nice feature that online and students don't need anything to click on and then work. So I'm gonna do like this. Uh, so this website right here, uh, you go in here, I'm gonna create a class. So you need a GeoGebra account. So instantly you create and you can use this one here. So I'm gonna create this class right here. And then um, uh, I'm gonna do this one here. I give my name, uh, the name for the class, demo, uh, demo. And then I create it. So I'm gonna give it to you. So please try. Um, you put uh, some name, you don't have to put your real name if you want to. But I'm going to show you how you interact with your student um, on this part right here. So let me put on the chat. Uh, so right here. So can you uh, open that link and join the activity, uh, this activity with me for graphing um, part? So can I do this here? So I see one person in class. 
um, go in there and try to do something with that. So the graph, it looked like, like this. It's looked like. It's looked like, like this. So for example, the equation right here, you show, I show my student how to do, and then they can do here. So uh, they have two points. So you're gonna do one point at the y-intercept. So at three right here, and then slope negative four. So I see I go down, I show them like that. And then I see, if you get it right, I show you did it. This is the part that my student love the most. They just see, okay, they confirm that they do it correct. Uh, and they really like this one. I say, if you get it correct, then you can try it many a time, uh, time if you want to. So I have the class like this, so what I do like this, so I will see all the students here, you did it, you did it, good. And if somebody like didn't get it right, oh, well, maybe they do like this. So where are you? How come you're not there? So that's how I can see my student, you know, I call their name. Um, let's see, did you need help? So this thing right here, I don't show my student this screen. I have another machine, so this is what I see. And then my student just see this. Just see what I do right here. But I put this one on the other screen, then maybe sometime they fall in high, I send them a chat, a note for them to see that part. Uh, so that's it, the first thing um, we did in class. So there are a lot of them like this. Uh, something like this one here is like more like lesson plan to go with this one. Um, so quadratic expressions, I'm gonna give you this one too. So let me see. And I can put up this one here. So um, this is the second one. I have to open with uh, uh, Google Chrome because um, Safari, it didn't work well with this one. Uh, this one here. Um, so for you to, so you don't have to. So this is this one here. So I this one, I don't create a class. But again, if you want to, you can create a class and then you can you know, um, give the student a lesson on this one right here and then you can uh, follow. So when you're here, I keep the lesson, you click on the here. First it show uh, equation you have to write in the A have to be greater than zero. Otherwise it doesn't work. Make sure you tell your student that. And then here is the instruction. You click each note and it have the instruction and the demo in there. So after you go through this one, and then you will ask them to do the same thing over here. If they get it correct, then it show over here, or oh, correct, uh, something to uh, confirm the student that they do on the right track. So they practice what they do and they do what they practice. So I hope that the student, you know, get the thing correct. Otherwise, um, it's very hard to, um, uh, work with them online if we don't see the work. So that's what I like to. Again, if you want to, you can click on create class and then you give the link to your student. Uh, you put on Canvas or whatever template you have in there, have your student do it. So I have more uh, on my website that you can do uh, in there uh, for your student to see. So that's algebra. Uh, if I have time, I can give you more demo on algebra. Uh, same thing for trick. Uh, I have a lot of them right here. Um, this is this one right here if for, I have the um, kind of, um, this one is like a PowerPoint one. And then you can, um, let me open it up. And then I work with you here, PowerPoint. Okay, uh, so I show my student after we teach them how to find the trick value for a special angle like 30, 90 and so on. So I make this shortcut here, I show them how to do this part. Here's the other angle. Uh oh, ah, it doesn't work on here. I'm sorry, so let me find out on my thing here for you to do that. Give me one minute. That is work earlier. Let me do this. Let me download. I thought I have it. I'm sorry. 
let me download the file and then I can do this. Okay, so here is my uh, my setup like this, and then I can do right here. So first, uh, I told my student you make a fraction, everything in the bottom two, and the top you put square root, and then you start filling up from zero to one, two, three, four, and then you simplify this so that you have the side for zero, thirty, forty-five, and so on, and then you do cosine um, backward, so copy backward, so you're gonna have it here. And then tangent, just side divide by cosine. Work with them a little bit to have all this is one. And then same thing, cotangent, copy tangent backward. And then secant, cosecant, it's just like one over side, like what you have the red one right there. And then uh, same thing for secant. Um, so I show my students this one and help them to kind of make their own table uh, so that they can do the part. Uh, so that for um, trick and that's one available on the website. So you, you can use that in your class. Uh, this one, another nice one about unit circle, somebody create this one. So I just uh, put it here, uh, same way. Hmm. This one is on Safari, so it doesn't work. Let me put on Google Chrome here. Yeah. Um, so this one is show the unit circle for student right here. So you can show the student to teach them uh, relationships. So this one is cosine and then here side and then so on. So you can see all the value right here. If you want, you can make the create a class and then you have your student to practice on this. Uh, so help them to have a visual picture on this part right here um, for that. Um, And some um, this one here, the basic trick uh, formula domino, I use with um, GeoGebra, I mean, I'm sorry, Jamboard. You heard Jamboard before? The Jamboard uh, right here. So let me give you the link and then you can um, uh, use this one. So in class, I have a set of this uh, in class to do, but now we online. So I transfer this to online so that uh, my student can use in class. Okay, so I see a question can I have here. For a, a differential equation, is it possible to grab the solution curve direct field without solution? Yes, you can do that. Um, the algebra have all that one function. So uh, maybe after this, you can uh, stay a little bit and we can chat about this one we can see here. So um, on this here, it's a view only, but if you change it to edit mode, and then you can have your student to move it around to see the relationship between the two. So that's what is a jam wall that I have my student uh, do on that part. So for the jam board, um, I have my student to um, work in group, and then they will together, they solve the questions. Uh, for the graphing polar curve, I have the, um, where did my mouse go? Where did my mouse go? Sorry. I don't know where the mouse. I don't know what happened to them. Let's see this. I can't do this. For graphing polar curve, I have a project on my website too. So that for student to uh, uh, do all of that. But you can see. Uh, this is how I started my uh, GeoGebra because I don't see, um, I don't know how my student understand. Uh, I found that it hard for me to understand at first. So that's why I start with polar curve in here. Uh, so when you have this, I have the 
use. Paula Kerb right here. I have uh, this is what I have my student to uh, explore them first before before the lesson. So I have them do like this. So they see the relationship between the uh, point on the Cartesian and the point on polar, uh, so that they can see all the curve right here and see how does that transfer from this upside down wave shape become the flower shape in this part right here. I have them study first, and then they kind of. Um, on the project, it show uh, how the relationship between the number of the coefficient of x right here related to the how many petal on the cosine uh, on the polar curve. Um, I had them study that part first. I mean, they get play with the app and then they come out uh, the observation and then we talk back in class. Um, so that is with the all the zoom online right now you can have the class and you drop it for a student and then they can explore first uh you can see them do like a couple of minutes before you explain the lesson um so it helped them to see things and then Uh, same thing with the law of psi um, uh, for our angle, angle, uh, angle, psi, psi, same thing like that. So you can see that part here. Uh, I will come back if I have time for um, later. Now, when you teach, uh, you like to um, give problem for your student practice. Um, yes, I'm going to talk about statistics later. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to give you uh, the little bit about Jamboard so we can practice uh, later soon in a couple of minutes. Um, when you teach, you like to give your student a problem to practice. But right now, before you write on the board, it's a different story than when you do on the computer. You like to give your student a nice number to work on. Um, you don't want them to work on the messy numbers, radical, square roots, and that kind of thing. Try to avoid, make them to understand the concept more the other one. So this one here is for you, uh, not for your student. Uh, so you use this one is to like, um, you put it on the side, so you give them problem and they come up with the solution on it. So I'm gonna put on the website here, for, I mean, on the chat here for you to see. Uh, you can follow me on this one. So when you go to see here, this one right here, for solving system of linear equation, the answer is integer, or integer. Uh, so very nice, especially when you have like three equations. So that's really uh, not, not nice to have something like that. Uh, so we're gonna do uh, in here. So you have the problem right here and you have the answer right here, uh, all integer. So you give to your student, or you can go to uh, the second one here, system of equations in here. Uh, this one, this. Uh, dependent or, or inconsistent. So you have you have two choices. This one have infinitely many solution, and this one have no solution. Um, you have to do the new problem. Oh, gonna do, oh, yeah. No solution right here. Uh, so you can have the student do that. Yes. Um, so let me go back to there's some more right here, especially when you solve the rational equations. So this one would be a lot of, uh, um, it kind of hard to make up on the spot for the equation with integer solution. And when I come up with the one with half the um, work problem too. So some people say, oh, uh, some work, it just doesn't make sense, but <laughs> I did make something for them to see that. So again, you don't show the student the screen. You maybe pop up the window and you say, oh, do this. And then maybe practice one more problem right here. Uh, so you can give them a whole bunch of them for them to practice uh, uh, in that part instead of uh, writing the question over and over again. Uh, so that's what I have in there. Um, right, log equation, again, this one is hard to make up right into spot. In the textbook, they don't have many uh, in here. So I have the question right here. You can have the two set equation right here. 
um, the one is said extra NARS, uh, so that you know they have two answers, and this one, the extra NARS one, uh, you can have in there. And then I have um, for geometry proportion, if you tease us one, um, triangle with integer uh, side. So that's one to kind of um, hard to see too. Um, so it's, I have the set of um, three things. Um, so you move you move the end to change the side here, all the side here, the angle right here. So have at least this angle right here, 60 degree uh, you have in there. And you change the side and you see how does it move in there. Uh, all side here, all side are integer, and this angle is 60, and then I have something 20 degree too. Um, so for you to give your student in class for them to practice, so easy to put down, okay, triangle uh, ABC with AC equal 15 the here and by the angle C. So that kind of thing you can have your student do right away um, in your class. Nice number uh, to have work in there. Um, there's something for a higher uh, partial fraction for calculus, LU decomposition. If you teach this one, it can value and system linear uh, differential equations. This one for uh, upper class. Um, if you teach, then you can uh, explore more over here. Um, so that's for um, this part. And now we're going to do uh, using my open math. So before I did you my open math for for you know keeping the quiz the homework, but right now I use this at, in class. So let's do this. So go to myopenmath.com. Have you used this one before? So if you do, uh, you don't send create an account to do that. But right now you uh, enter at a student and go to myopenmath.com and you the course ID one zero three three nine one and enrollment key mom. Uh, so that's one that you're gonna go in there. So you're gonna do the part. Yeah, thank you, Julie. Yeah, and put the course ID uh, in there. Just, just put the fake name in there so we can, uh, uh, I'm gonna show you how that you interact with your student um, using my open app. Yeah, so we ready? So let me, let me put down, I lost my thing again. I don't know what happened. Let me type in the, the course ID in here before I move to the another slide. Okay, maybe I could leave it there for a bit. Okay, let me do this. So I'm at course ID right there, so you can see. And then uh, you're gonna go here, let's like, try to do the first assignment, the um, demo right here, assignment. So when you open this assignment, um, so I had my student do like this. I show them a problem right here for this one here. Okay, so how do you factor? I show them how to do all of that. And you can type the equation this way in here too. So for example, you type in here, I'm gonna retype the question, I'm gonna do like this. Uh, so first you hit the key, um, the tilde key. So you have that the stroke in the bottom right there, you click in there. So when you have this one, you type, it's gonna show up the way it should be, like three X square, and then um, minus 17x, and then plus 20. So when you do like this, you get out the equation, it looks the way it's there. You can do it like, for example, I can do um, this. I can do uh, square root of, uh, let's see, um, x minus one, uh, and then divide it by, uh, let's say, x square um, plus, uh, one, for example, like this. So it come out uh, the way is it look, um, you know, whatever you want to type, you can do in here. And then you show your student work. And when students do the work, and then they have the answer correct, it's gonna show in here correct. Like, uh, like for example, this one right here. So grab this one right here. You're gonna show your student one and then they can do it. And if they have question, they can put at work here, they can type in, you can see that work right away. As soon as they say, it, you see it right away. Um, so for example, I show my student this one right here. Okay, so grab this one. So we start at this one at one and then down. So I have this one right here. So I have the graph. So I submit, I should have my correct answer right here. Uh, submit, so right away I see. So after I do this, I have my student do and then I can see the work. So can some of you like pretend to do some work type in something here? So I'm gonna show you how you monitor this work. Uh, in this class. 
So uh, you're going to go over here. You go to grid right here. And over here, you see some of them correct, some of them don't. You can want to see one question at a time, or you can want to see all of them. It's OK, too. So if I go over here, hopefully some of you join in. Okay, so I can see uh, the name of you in here, like like this person right here. I see the name right here. Thank you, Trina. Uh, so you can see your work right away, and then you can send the feedback for them uh, right over here. Say like, good job and continue, or uh, or they do something wrong. You give them some hints in here too, and you submit. Um, so they can see. I go all the way down here. I submit. So I think uh, that's the um, person can see it right away in there. Um, so this is how I monitor my student work. I can see that work. I can see, you know, where they get wrong. I can give them some hints for them to do, um, you know, all the work correctly. Uh, so I use this one in all my class right now. So I make, uh, you can make, a, let me show you how to make one. Uh, so for example, you teach today, you teach like um, solving linear equation. For example, we did a practice. Um, linear equation, for example, equation. And then you can go over here, you can search for the problems. So over here, make sure that you click on this box. Um, click box right here. You click on this box, like show work. Uh, you want to show during assessment, after assessment, I did too like this. So whenever they do, they can do them there. And if you want to make hard, you can do that whatever you choose here, and you can give them the time to. So create the assessment, and you go here, you're looking for a question, like you say, uh, linear equation. And then you can have a lot of them come out there, uh, equation, so for example, like this. And you search, uh, you can go by topic, or you can search in here, they have a whole bunch of questions for you to do. Word problem, first equation, uh, maybe I can do a little bit more details because this one is too broad. It gives me a lot of uh, um, question. Graph linear equation, for example, like this. So you search, you have a lot of here question easy. You take a look this one and say, oh, I like this question. So I'm going to add this one into this one, right? So that I'm going to select this or maybe uh, this one, maybe I like this one maybe. And then you can choose whatever you view in here, you choose. And then I choose the one is similar to the textbook that I'm teaching. So that's how I um, modify in class. Um, yeah. So then you can done this one. You can preview first and then right here, preview. And then you will see how does that look like in here. And then uh, you have your student give the link to your student just like the way I did uh, for you. So what I did in my school, I embed into Canvas, like, let me show you this here. So in my course, I embed it in Canvas. If you use Canvas, so this is what you do right here. Uh, so you embed it in Canvas. A very nice thing about uh, this here that the student don't have to do extra uh, account or anything. You just click on here. So I have my student doing this one right here, right? So in here, they see it right away. And then from that, I can view it right here. So I can view this is what my student did the other day. So I can view that work in here. Uh, so I can see that work just like you see on the other, um, uh, my open math link. So if you have Canvas, I think Blackboard, you can use this too. Um, I don't know about the Moodle. Um, the Moodle. Uh, I don't know about that one, but I I see a lot of people on my open math that you um, Blackboard is work too. Um, and then let me go back to my thing first. Oh, where does it go? Oh, right here. Uh, for calculus, I have a lot of uh, things to do too. So you can take a look at uh, that one to see um, how does that part. So I have, um, I like this one, uh, the definition pre-lesson. So usually before I have students like just like throw the formula at them, I throw the definition at them, but let them to um, 
kind of explore a little bit. So this person, he wrote a lot of nice um, uh, geogebra for teaching. Um, so have the students study first. Say, okay, so why, this, okay, what kind of, is it function, is it continuous and not continuous? At so how to understand the concept first, like explore, and I can see this one, okay, it's continuous, because it's not continuous, it's kind of broken right here, so we can see that. And then same thing over here, uh, is that this one, the same kind of discontinued, like the one before or not, and help them to explore this one. And after they do that, you do the kind of visualize the definition. I think this part is really helpful. I, I really appreciate this one for my students to understand. I remember when I were in, oh, I have the U in Chrome again. This one doesn't work. Hmm. When I were in college, I just say, okay, whatever they said, I could do it. But I really don't understand the meaning of all the definition of continuous. But when I found this app here, it's really um, um, helpful to see here. So you click on this one, you play. If function continuous, if and only, oh, sorry. Yeah, it show you the point right here and you have it, right? Uh, definition. And then it will show the picture and it has like interactive things here. It show the concept of the definition of continuous. The student can have that in the picture so they can see that. So have to be limited to the left, limited to the right, have to be the same and the same with the, at that point. So that function continuous. So I, I, I found that this one, it much better than have the student read the definition. This is why very hard to understand um, for that part. Okay, so uh, I hope that you can try one of those. Um, okay, and Cal2, I have more things uh, in here. So I have the student to uh, do all of this. One of them, I have the project that I do is not just only like um, to, um, to understand, but they can create some of this work that uh, you see right here. Uh, it looked complicated, but uh, it has step-by-step for student to do a very it doable and the student come out really a uh, nice project. And the below here is some project that my student do with polar curve. Uh, so they have in here, very nice um, to have that part. Uh, so these you can use in class and you can have your student practice understanding or you can give them the project. Uh, so you can find all of that information on my website. Um, okay. Uh, somebody asked for statistics earlier. So I have um, my, uh, if you go to my statistics, you have a lot of thing in there. Um, the one you may use here, you um, use the um, hypothesis testing app. Um, so let me go to my website. So this is the app that I use for all my statistics. So I have my, uh, I'm teaching statistics for criminal justice student. Um, so they not strong at math at all. And <laughs> because this pandemic, so last semester, first time they tell me teach online, that means no lecture, nothing. So I can make the video and then I help them to, um, you know, watch the video and then learn of this. They did really well on, on the course. So this is the one that I use all the time. Uh, so I make this one like this. So on this one here, oh, again, so let me go to grow. Okay. So on this one right here, you have everything in here. You have, uh, okay. you have this one, you have, um, this one for a binomial, but you can have normal distribution in here too, right? So here you can give them, like you don't need this. Right here, you can give the student this one, you ask them for a Z score, or you can give them, let's say I have the mean of 100, and then the standard deviation 15, let's say that for some sort of standardized test. So you ask them, okay, what is probability that you have uh, you score like um, 110, uh, higher 110. So I'm gonna do this one and you're gonna put this number over here like 110, yeah, hit enter. And then it have the answer over here for you too. Oh, where did it go? 
So I have one whole thing, right? So let me make it smaller. Um, let me make something. Oh, this is less than. So I have to. Oh, over here, I, mean, I do it wrong. Probability that I have 110, I put it wrong way. So that would be this part right here, right? So you have that part. Or you say, uh, what is the top 10% um, score would be? So you can do that too. The top 10% would be 0.1, and then it's gonna give you all the score gonna be 119 something. So it have everything to do that part. Yes, student, uh, the GeoGebra, you can use it everything. Uh, phone is work too, but I think the phone is kind of small, um, so it's hard for them to navigate. But they can use phone, it's work on phone as well. Um, so I have my student uh, study and use all this one. It had more than that. It had, um, you go in here, it had the Z test for the mean, um, Z test, T test, and then good net of fit, uh, square fit, everything you have in here. You don't need uh, anything else. So I, I create a manual. Um, and then you can follow that or you can follow to my um, my uh, statistics uh, with GeoGebra. Uh, I have I make a YouTube video for my student to watch and then you can use that too. Uh, let me put it back here so you can see. Um, so when you go here, hypothesis testing, you have here and then I have the manual. I, I forgot what I put it. I think I think I have to send to you. I thought I put in here, but I, I didn't post it in here yet. Uh, I have the manual how to for you to do all of that. Uh, then you can see, um, or you can see my whole statistics uh, video on YouTube. Let me go back to my site so you can see this. Okay, so once again, I'd like to welcome you to our webinar series, Teaching oh, Statistics oh, Using GeoGebra, <laughs> with our presenter, Toitong Fan Yamada. Wait, hold on. Uh, she's a lecture, lecturer oh. at the Mathematics Department in Cal State Los Angeles. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's from last time. Um, let me open up again. Okay. So you can uh, have my whole app in YouTube. I put here the whole series from binomial distribution all the way up to um, ANOVA. Uh, and then I have the project in here to do too. Uh, so you can um, see this one. It's very um, user-friendly. It, uh, it get like everything self-explanatory is in there. You click on and you can see it. Uh, so I create the video for my student watch for each topic. And then from that, they do the uh, homework and quiz and everything in there. And you know, you, when you use this one, you can make your own data. And my open math, they have the whole set of all this question and make it really um, easy to do in that part too. So let me move to the next one. Okay, so I have the house to uh, list on my website too. Uh, so you can uh, see in there, I found that this one, sometimes we teach, we want to write on something or my student want to write on something. So uh, if you have the touch screen um, machine, then this one is for you, uh, handwriting uh, on the part. Oh, where does it go? What happened? How come this didn't go to that? Let me go to that side again. Okay, this is for handwriting. Uh, you can use this one in your class. You want to have a touch screen. You want to write on that, you can do this one too. So I show you how to write in here. So you can follow me in here. Um, I don't have I don't have my touch screen. So, <laughs> and then, uh, so I have to use this one with the mouse. So you can click on this one here, pen, and then you can write. You can write like uh, integral, uh, let's say, uh, 2x, okay, and then uh, over 
uh, square root uh, x squared plus one, for example, like this. You can write it in this one here, it's nice. So if you have a, a, a touch screen and a pen, then you can do that. I don't have it. I, you know, you, you can write in this way for them to do this dx. So you can do uh, at anything that you want to on that part here. And another one in here, that would be the hand drawing. I found this one a very useful. When you teach the student, uh, grab the cone section. So for example, you write, okay, the ellipse would be at, uh, let's say at two, one center. Let's see, go here. And you click on free hand shape. Click on this one here. Uh, so the, the center right here, ellipse right here, you show your student, on this app, it has thing here to write, but you want to show your student, right? So you want to uh, give them that part. So let's see, you're gonna go two to the left, two to the right, and one up, one down. So you mark all this point right here, and then you're gonna um, draw the circle, uh, draw the ellipse. So I, if I draw the ellipse, I like the part. If I draw like this, you see, I can do it with my mouse here. then it give that to you, like proxy make you the perfect one. So uh, I really like this tool to help my student to see things, or you can draw the problem approximately, and then it fit you for that one in there. Uh, so that for you to use in that part. Okay. Um, How you type math on uh, on Mac? Okay, so that's another one, right? You can use right here. Uh, so when you go to my website, you can go to let's see here. The how to is on the, there, and the how to it show you how to write so um, type question on uh, using Mac symbol. So this one we use in math it is Mac is it very. Uh, helpful for you to use if you use Mac. I don't, I want to have a collection of um, PC too, so that my student can use. So let me show you a demo for this one right here so you can see. Um, so for example, you gonna write your student like in the group that you can do that option B, and then you're gonna write over here, you're gonna write something like, I did make something like X, um, plus one, for example, like this, and then dx. And let's say this one is greater or equal to, then you can do that too. Option, I think. Yeah, you click option and then the greater equal size, so it give you something like that too. You can have something like this. It's very handy when you type the equation on your uh, doc file um, for that part. And some of you asked me how to use the um, Jamboard. So this is what I do right here. So let me show you. Um, I give you this one right here so you can practice on this. Can I? Can I put you on here a little bit so I have to find my things in here? So here, let's let practice on this. Um, let's try to practice on this Jamboard right here. So I give you this one. So let's open this Jamboard right here so that you can try to see how this is one like. Okay, so I give you the link to that Jamboard. So I create uh, a Jamboard. So what I do in class, I did like this. So I take the Jamboard and then I 
put in the link like this right here. And I asked the student, you the caller to write your name and your answer. So that's how I um, keep track of their work. And then I divide them in group in link. And if you are group one, click link one and so on uh, in there. But right now for the demos for our group, so I can put everybody in one so that we can see in here. Um, so you have the link, you see many people in there. So for example, uh, let's try somebody put the name on first. So because see, you do like this, I don't know who did what, right? So I make my student like over here, they have to put their name in here. Um, yeah, uh, so you, this one to put the name on. Um, so this, um, you you can use this sticky notes or you can use this one right here. So for example, I my here, I'm gonna choose my color, let's say red right here. Uh, so I'm gonna write my name in here. Uh, so see here. Uh, uh, should be, should work. Yeah, okay, Julie did that, thank you. So she can put in there and then whatever she does and then she choose, you can move your thing around. Yeah, you can move your thing around like that. And so, okay, I did this one, I put right here. And after they do this, I ask them to find the domain and range. So that's where they use that thing in here, they interact with this one right here and they can move things around. So that same thing with the, um, you know, the domino that I showed you earlier. Um, so that you can have your student explore uh, on that part too. Um, so that's one kind of small, so it's very hard to do uh, on that part, but you can uh, have your student interact with this. So uh, I think the best is group like five people is the best. So uh, depending on your student, then you're gonna divide in group like mine. Um, I have 25 students, so I have them five groups um, in here that I have in there for them to practice. Uh, same thing with the, um, with the um, uh, this one I used it for first day activity. Um, so I have this link for you too. So you can copy this link and then you, um, when you go home, you erase all the people drawing and you uh, make your, uh, your own template. Or I can later, I put the, um, thank you. Later, I put the uh, the slideshow and then you can get all the link in there for you to practice on that part. Uh, let me see. So I have to put this down a bit. Okay. Um, I use Google Doc for a sample right here. So let me put this one right. Uh, Google Doc. Uh, I never saw it before, but when I meant my student to work. I said, oh, I can use this one in class too. Uh, so this is what I have my student do in here. Uh, first day of meeting, uh, Cal one. So I have them do some fun, uh, you know, kind of um, puzzle in here. Uh, I don't know what they call, I forgot. And then they have they do in the part here. So um, from this, I can, let me see. Oh, I have to get my, hold on. Give me one minute. So let me give you the um, Google Doc for you to see into. Okay, so here is the link for the uh, Google Doc for first day meeting.
Yeah, so I create this one for my student to have fun on the first day of meetings. Can you access to this one? The one I just sent it to you. You can add, right? Did I see? Yeah. So I put this one in here too. And then you can do uh, it, the part like, for example, I tell my son, okay, number four, that means read between lines. So, and then I have them to practice on this. And after they've done that, I have them to do the part here. So anybody can come here, you do the same thing with Jamboard. So you give each group a link and then they interact here. And when you, they go in, you ask them to cue a caller to write the name and answer. So let's see um, if you draw here, you gonna click on this one right here, you cue the caller that you write with your name on this. Um, so this part right here. So I can cue my name, yeah, Julie. And then you, Julie, you can cue that caller, you change your name. And then whatever they write, it's gonna be that caller would be with uh, Julie. Julie had purple and the other people cannot chew that color. Uh, so you can um, uh, do that part. Uh, so you don't have to go into a, a, a Zoom room to see student work. So you can be outside and then you can see that work, all of that work in there. Um, so that's what I did for my students. So here is that my student did on the first day meeting. Um, See, I have uh, I have all the my group meeting right here. I put them on this, and then I can see that work outside, and I make the notes. I uh, see, oh, they didn't do well, and then I will go back to see. Uh, okay, you need to do this. You need to do that. So I give them the guideline, the hints for them to do the part right here. Um, let me see. I don't have to go into the group, but I have. I open all my thing around, and then I go. I give them the hints for them to. Uh, do all the work in here. Uh, I can make comment on here on that work too, uh, so you can see that. So for example, over here, I would put right here, I say, um, uh, say, uh, Julie, let me see, I can do like this. Julie, oh, what happened? Let me see. Uh, Julie, uh, please change to, change color to blue, for example, uh, to blue. So usually they, uh, uh, they make it like too light, too dark, and then give them the note for them for like this so they can do uh, everything in there. Uh, so I hope that you can use this one for your student first day. Uh, help them to have some fun, relax first, and then <laughs> they can do uh, all this one in here. Um, so you can group work. I find this one the best way to interact with your student. Um, I have a couple of minutes. Let me see if anything that I can have. So on my how to, uh, list you have everything in here that you can follow through that you can see that part so i think uh, that's what i have in there so now i have time so for if you have any question for me then i can uh, answer your question uh, now Stop share. Okay. So if you have any question for me, I have like uh, five minutes <laughs> to have any question. So I, I know there's a lot of information for you to, um, to, to, to observe today, but uh, if you can go to my website and then you can follow through. So I'm gonna send Mike uh, on Julie the the PowerPoint that I have, then you can click on that. You kind of follow through and you have all your template there so that you can use in your class. Yeah. Um, I learned, I know like Jamboard can do group work before. Um, I think Jamboard is nice thing like you can have uh, um, a graph and there and you have to move and do things like that, but it's very hard to type all the questions. Uh, so, uh, is, uh, but I like Google Doc. Google Doc, like you easier to type is easier thing. But if you want to draw something, uh, moving thing around Jamboard, it work better. Yeah. Uh, yes, my open math is free to use. And you go over that, they have all topic from, um, I'm teaching um, discrete math and uh, linear equation. I'm sorry, linear algebra. And all of them, they have the uh, template in there. 
Um, so let me quickly show you the my open math thing. Um, I know this is a lot, uh, a lot of information, but I hope that you can choose some of them to use to interact with your student. I don't like to talk with my student like, um, you know, just lecture only. I don't like that. So I would like to interact with my student. Let's see here. Um, so when you go to my open math here, you open the course. So for example, I want to create a new course right here, add a new course. And um, you can choose from a promote co course right here, or um, you looking for the course and whatever you want, and you can do that here. They have all level from a remittance right here. Uh, if you teach other object, like uh, other subject like physics or chemistry, they have in their econ, they have problem in there too. Um, so you can do each level and they have textbook attached to this one, each level, like you have the textbook, you can do the problem they write according to the textbook. And the, um, if you have any question you put on the forum, they will answer you right away. So that's how I get all my uh, help in there. So instantly, it, much better than any publisher that I have uh, right here. You have people wrote about overthink about the cheating, about this, about that, and then uh, you learn all um, you know techniques to doing that. And that's pretty easy to use, if not hard. Um, I think David Lipman is the person who write it, and then he um, and all the people. It's like open source, so people like I write some questions, and then. Um, you know, put in a question bank, everybody can use. Uh, so this is uh, for everybody, but only educator can have an account. So they verified it by hand. Um, so give them like, uh, maybe sometime it take as long as three days uh, to get your account approved. Uh, so when you use it, maybe you submit uh, your website, something related to your school where you teach. So they verify that you are a faculty and then they can let you in right away. Uh, so very, a very good source. I, I like it much better than any um, any publisher uh, resorted. So it's really good. Yes. Um, so I hope that you all can use this right away. And I found that this one is very easy to um, monitor student work because the problem is student, they don't know if they do it right or not, especially this time you can not see their work. So this one is um, um, the best. Uh, to use uh, in the time uh, in here. So I hope that you guys can use uh, some of these in your classroom um, in coming couple of weeks for you guys. Yeah. Any other question that you have? Um, for somebody who had about the bang, bandwidth one, so, so far, um, well, sometimes I have my student and I, I get dropped out to the, the internet too. So uh, I just have my student to lock it back. And then we always give them the extra time for them to do that. So I give the quiz, the test online, so they have two days to start. Um, but as soon with that two day window, so at time, as soon as they start the time running, and I told them, uh, if you have problem, then you send me the message right away. So if I'm up, don't send me the midnight, then I cannot do that. But <laughs> it, uh, within the day, then I can do that part for them. If midnight, maybe I get up in the morning, I can reset for them easy to do, reset for them to do that part. Um, so it's, it's, it's really um, manageable, if not hard, yeah. Yes, they have. They have a lot of um, uh, my open map people present it everywhere. Um, every conference is, I, I, I heard that they present people uh, do the work over there. I really um, appreciate that template a lot. The use for my make my teaching easier. OK, so thank you for you to join me here this morning. Uh, and then I hope that um, I wish you have a wonderful semester with your student. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see, Dara. So um, maybe can we, I can show you. So if you go to, yeah, I'm gonna show a little bit about, uh, let's see, Dara asked about the differential equation. 
So if you go to GeoGebra, let me see here. And you can search for that. You can search for information. You search for uh, uh, differential equations in here, and they come up with a whole bunch of activities. So you don't have to write your own things. Um, what I did here, I look at for whatever I want to. So like this one, I like it. And then see if you click on the book, they have a whole bunch of them for you to do in here. So if I like this one, let's say I put it here. Um, if I like my student do this, so I create a class or sometimes they written not in English, then you can make a copy and then you can uh, copy the activity and then you can change it to English if you want to. So it's very uh, easy to, to use. GeoGebra is like your account you create, you use right away. But uh, um, the other part is, uh, I mean, my open math, it takes time. Yeah, yes, you can, uh, you are welcome to email me, uh, Tifan Yamada, I mean, or, or Tifan Yatri at Cal State LA, or Tifan, let me put, flash this, my things back again. But you can have my, the information I have it on my, um, on my slideshow, or you go to my website, then you can uh, see my, right here. So my website right here, fanyamada.wipley.com or Tifanya tree at calcetla.edu. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for all you are here. Thank you. Yes. Thank you to Yet Dong. That was great. Yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll have, um, so as Julie said, I'll have the recording or we'll have the recording posted on the website, a Mishmatic website. So you all can go back and review some of the activities that Tiyak Dong shared with us. And I also have all the links that were shared in the chat, I'll also have those posted on the website as well. So you can get direct access to the activities that she shared.